we're going to see the damage Storm Eric's done. I'm heading on my way to work and yeah, it's wet. We've got gale force winds last night and torrential rain. Hopefully we'll see if we can cross the river this afternoon over the bridges, but I'm expecting them to be flooded and all my lower islands to be flooded too. So the choice I made to keep away from the front plains last week was the right one for a change. <laughs> Wow, it's uh, definitely ripped the banks like. Wow, look at that. There is no banks anymore. It always happens to me. <laughs> look at this, look at this, right? Wait, I'll jog down here a little bit oh, there ain't none left my bench is gone anyway I've got a slight feeling I'm not going to be able to get through there when I finish work Here we are, we've just set off. The wind and rain stopped for now. We're still getting mad gusts. But I'm heading to uh, the village walking, cross country, little by road as I can. And uh, there will be some roads, but I need to get underneath the railway bridge and hopefully it's not flooded. You know the uh, bench I carved on the floodplain flood camp? Uh, I checked this morning and that's pretty much a meter over the top of the island so the island's completely gone but our friend Stu managed to put a massive chunk of our bench suspended in the tree so like a few of our subscribers suggested so hopefully it's still there and it hasn't fallen out but we'll see because we're passing there so you know the uh, bench I carved on the floodplain flood camp? Uh, I checked this morning and that's pretty much a metre over the top of the island so the island's completely gone but our friend Stu managed to put a massive chunk of our bench suspended in the tree so like a few of our subscribers suggested so hopefully it's still there and it hasn't fallen out but we'll see because we're passing there I mean, I don't even know if I'm going to get through, eh? I mean, look at it. It's so dirty and brown. I mean, the fact that all the trees on the sides are covered, it's not really a good sign for that railway bridge, but I'm still keeping my fingers crossed because if we can't get through there, then it's, uh, it's game over, I'm afraid. I don't think I've ever said that before. Like, nah, I mean, I'm not going to go home because, uh, yeah, that's just not going to happen. This morning, see the line? So it's gone down about two metres. So hopefully, fingers crossed, people. Look at that. So close. It has been flooded, though, because look at the other side, the path's flooded. At least I can get through, eh? There's the first floodplain camp. See that log there? That's where I cut the legs from my bench off. My chainsaw. And that's floating. On one side, anyway. 
that uh, camps the benches up there a little bit. We'll walk up and see. Look, there's a pallet. It's washed up. So all this must have been flooded this morning. Oh yeah, there's not even the bench left in the tree, eh? It's completely gone. Look at that. Where that blue rope was, right there, that's where the bench was. It's gone. I mean, it's not a bother to us. I, I don't get upset when I lose stuff because it happens so often. We'll just uh, build another one when it goes down. Mental. So glad I was not camping there. Look, there's the, there's the fire pit there. Hey, God, there ain't none left. You never know, we might be lucky and the bench might be somewhere. But probably not. <laughs> you normally cross to get there. I mean, half of that's submerged. Wouldn't surprise if we actually lose that before long. But imagine all the lumber this flood's gonna leave behind. I mean, as far as the eye can see, it's just water in the valley. Absolutely awesome, the power of Mother Nature. I can't actually wait to get on the road, eh? <sighs> Stare at the dog. <laughs> He's muddy as hell. I've got a towel in my bag for him. Even the fields are flooded, eh? Mm. Oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. Right, I'm gonna head up out these fields and get to higher ground and start hitting some roads, I think, to get out of this mud and water. So I've got about 35 minutes before the sun goes down behind the brow, so we might not get there by dark by light sorry it, it'll be dark by the time we get there pretty much is what i'm saying might have to stop and get my head torch out my bag oh. i've just walked up the biggest hill ever back there it's like a soul crushing hill i am so glad i do not have a chest bag with me i figured if i had to wade through that train track tunnel then it's probably best not to have a chest bag but because I'm going to the village it's uh, you know I don't need a lot I've just pretty much got a rucksack full of food and my uh, sleeping bag and a couple of bits of softies and you know nothing major no tarps or tent pegs or anything like that I'm going to cut through that farm because I have permission to do so and then We'll be on main roads again. I mean, that thing is shifting. You can hear it cutting through the air. I love those things, you know. Well, I like them better than high voltage cables anyway. I think a lot of my subscribers do too because I've said so in comments. I don't think they're really an ISO. You know what I mean? I'm sure there could be worse things like a coal burning plant or something like that. You know what I mean? Well, that's me pass through the farm. A better road than mud, eh? <laughs> We're on roads now. Stop for a little uh, 
bit of chocolate and a drink. Mm. I've got to head all the way over there. I really do not enjoy walking on roads, eh? I keep the dog on the side. The cars, I mean. The cars are going on the other side of the road to get away from us, so that's quite good. A look at the old, uh, the old farm there, homestead. It's all smashed up, that. The old asbestos sheet and roofing. Don't make that anymore. And for good reason, too. There's the moon. Still walking. Sun's gone. Just the last few bits of daylight left. But I'm about 20 minutes away, so I am getting there rapidly. I'll get there before it's dark. I have not long left now. Just this next left, and then top of that hill, and I am there. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> still going. Not bad, but. Two and a half hours of walking, clocked some distance, especially carrying quite a big bag. Although it's just food, really. But uh, yeah, next turn in Zars, across a couple of fields, and then I'm at the village. Just in time. Feel that rain? There's my kit I carried. That's just uh, some food I took out the top of my bag to get my head torch out. I put this uh, cot down here just to put my rucksack on because the floor's a bit damp just because the water table's close to the surface of the ground up here. The fireplace is alright. We have a couple of leaks but they'll soon uh, I'll soon sort them out. <laughs> Stay at Tyson. Don't worry mate, we'll get you sorted out. Kind of just chilling in the shelter for now because I'm uh, one second. I'll turn the light off and turn you around so you can actually see us. Right, yeah. So I'm sitting here in the shelter. You can see my breath in the air. It's cold. Got my fire pit going. Well, the the fire place that Tim and uh, myself made, and that's fine. That's probably the most sturdy thing about this shelter is the fireplace. So I've found leaks on this wall here and what's happened is the winds pulled the tarp over the supporting post and the rains hit the supporting post, ran down, hit the wall and also the, I think a cow's chewed through one of my supporting ropes. You know when you tie two posts either side of the wall and clamp them in? Well it's chewed through one of them or grinded or damaged one of them and yeah, this wall, some of the chinkins come out of it, but it's fixable. We also need a raised floor because the water table, it's only going to get worse over the next few weeks. So yeah, we'll have to sort that out. I'm probably going to be back camping with Tim next week. Yeah, I sort of uh, need a little bit of me time just to, after the Christmas rush and everything. And it's just one of those things, you know. Tim understands. But yeah, I'll be back camping with Tim next week. We're, uh, I'm literally messaging him now and telling him about the cabin and what's happened to it and he's asking about his fire pit. So, yeah, I might ask him if he's going to pop out tomorrow and give us a hand lifting some because I think it's going to take two people to put this support wall back into place. Uh, what else? I put the yard outside is absolutely perfect. Uh, my benches are all spot on. Shelter next door. There's been some damage to the chimney. I think a cow's caught it and the chimney's been knocked off it. So, but I think I'm going to cut my losses with that one. And, uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm still debating that. We'll see what Tim thinks, because it's his village just as much as mine, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, so I've got my bed down. 
I'm gonna get some coffee on the go and uh, in-depth thoughts. Also, the farmer has a burn pile of wood, which is like, like planks and stuff like that. So I might go in the dead of night later on and steal, see what I can uh, borrow and beg from that. Because there looked some to be some good wood on the way in. So yeah, we'll keep you posted as we're going. Right, so I started off with this. And obviously you can see it's thinged at the top. So that's no good for a raised floor. And plus the fact that it's... It's... Uh, overlapped and rigid. So I got two of these. Taking it one apart sawed all the planks to the, <laughs> to the same size now I'm going to reassemble it but flat and that's going to be the first half of my raised floor for my shelter I've got some 2 by 4s down here and another one on here they're going to be my ridge poles look at my walls now eh I've got so much wood around here. But piles there, the rain's just started. Two gates that I'm using as uh, kind of windbreak barriers at the moment. They're quite cool. Nice varnished and sexy. So it'll last a while. I've uh, put, used my auger, drilled holes through, and tied it to the actual thing. My sawhorse. My bench that I'm using as a sawhorse. <laughs> I built a sawhorse and I've been using it to chop logs but because the planks are flat and they're short they don't fit on the sawhorse so I'm using my bench to saw them just as good so yeah now I'm going to reassemble the first part it's pretty pitch black oh and look what else I found him look at that nice bit of ply board don't know what I'm going to use that for yet but yeah we're uh, pretty much rolling. Also took the logs off this just to open that up. That's kind of a chill area, open. Just to keep us out the rain so I'm not using the main shelter. And Tim's coming tomorrow, camping tomorrow night with us. So yeah, I'll probably have to pull out that raised bed to put the new floor in. But I'm looking forward to actually having a nice dry floor that I can walk around in bare feet in. Tyson's been sleeping there for about an hour. It's like 1 a.m. in the morning now, so I'm gonna plod on. There's my first piece of uh, raised floor done. God, it took some doing, eh? It's looking good, but I need another piece identical to that, and then I'm done. Oh, what's this? What's this? <laughs> it is. Oh, I forgot to check the time before I press record. I have ha exactly half of the raised floor done. It's early hours of the morning. I'm gonna. I'm halfway done the other, other section too. So yeah. It's looking good. I'm chuffed to bits, and we're about three inch off the ground too. So yeah. Very happy with how this turned out. And I have turned into a pro at uh, uh, taking apart fence pallets. My pencil. <laughs> I've got measuring tape too, you know, I brought it with us. I didn't even realise I was going to build a raised floor, but I'm glad that I brought a pencil and a measuring tape now, like. Just got to sort out a new plinth for the fire, but I'll sort that once I've actually got the whole floor in. There's a couple of bits around the edges that obviously I've got to do a huge oblong shaped pallet, which is going to leave a little gap because that wall's not straight. But for freehand building, you know, you, you, it is what it is.
Well, I'm going to get me about two hours sleep before the sun comes up. And we'll catch you all again soon. Well, I'm going to get about two hours sleep before the sun comes up. So we'll uh, see you all in a couple of hours. Morning all. That's my uh, three and a half hours sleep I've had. Tyson's still in the uh, sleeping bag, as you can see. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna get up and get an outside fire going. There's not much of my fire left in here, like. Just dregs. That was the raised bed that was inside the shelter last night. You know, look at my camp now. Well, Tim will be here soon. I've got fence panels everywhere, like after wrecking this raised floor. How awesome it is. I love it. it, it it's both sides too. I just put my tarp on just a little bit more insulation. But yeah, the full floor and I've got this nice flagstone as a doorstep too. Well, that's the plinth. Oh, it's bright. all the people that whine about my axe uh, axe safety skills how's this te technique for you probably still whine oh my god it's within nine meters of your leg watch yourself <laughs> Oh my god, he's holding an axe by the handle, he might cut himself. <laughs> You'd be surprised the idiots I get on my channel complaining about axe. The way I cut stuff, you know what I mean? Well, is what it is, and it works for us, that's all that matters, isn't it? A mound of uh, earth next to the woodland that the village is in. You can see how much it's grown up now. It's well over my head. It's looking good. Can't wait till the summer to see what it uh, obviously turns green. Be a lot of willow in there. 12 acres too, so nice. See the smoke coming from the village. <laughs> It's right in the middle. So I've just put this one in place too. That's where the dog's sitting pretty much. The chinking on this side's dried really well, hasn't it?
Split in more wood. The uh, Tim brought coffee and biscuits, and we're uh, chilling. Tim's taking care of the indoor fire for us. And uh, I'm doing the outside one. And Tyson's just chewing everything. Fire's rare and put a little walkway down here just to stop mud developing. Starting to come along. Got another sheet of wood across the back of there, the bench now. Not the bench, the table it's pretty much our cutting area over there hence all the wood standing drying Tim's fixing an extension on my chimney and we're going to try this fireplace in this new shelter. It's really good that, this like. So Tim's uh, managed to adjust the chimney and all that on this clay fireplace and it's not smoking out the door anymore. We're just giving it a good fire off. Put a huge clay donut around the base of the chimney, well the top of the chimney, and attach this. I've had it on before but I couldn't get it steady and it wasn't really safe. I was worried it was going to collapse because there wasn't enough clay on the chimney. So we're using all these spare planks that I cut with the chainsaw last time I was here to make uh, another bench but one with the back on. Not that there's anything wrong with this one, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's, why not eh? Tyson chief.
them two planks and then because that's not fixed and then put a third one from here on. I mean that's not fixed tight. Spending a bit of time building the bench. Nice back on it. Going out of that. So, oh, dude, that's a fat wood. Time building a bench. John's chucking fat wood at me. <laughs> it's like Not that I mind. Almost got a living room going, John. There you go. Oof. Not far. A little bit off that side. Identical. Yep. Right it right now. Mm -hmm. It'll push it as you as we push into yeah. it. Yeah, solid. Oh, that, that is solid. sturdy. That is re really sturdy. Isn't it? It's amazing a little bit of prop can do. It's comfy too, isn't it? Yeah, really comfortable. Ooh. It's like better than some garden bench. Oh, yeah. that is. It didn't made take these shorter. Just so that they were out of, out of the way. Come on, we'll knock it off. Oh, no, the, what? Like yeah. We have a four hammer. What about that other slat? Will that cover them? I but then we're going to be a mile and a half away from the back, eh? You're going to yeah, be sitting true. here and be like, it's not too bad. It's just a minor niggle. Well, why don't we chop two identical legs, hammer them in, and then just and then saw just that off? There <laughs> we go. Man has a good idea. <laughs> Right, no, put, put that back so I can mark it with your pencil. Ah, uh, it's in there. So for tea, I've got some new potatoes with mint. 
and carrots and broccoli. We've got some nice sirloin steaks over there on our prep table. Got the potatoes in there too, everything's cooked in there. Just uh, putting this on for some more water because I've got some noodles I'm gonna cook as well. Just because I fancy some noodles. The sirloins. Sun's gone down. Maybe 30 minutes of daylight left, and then it's gone. Tyson's chilling on our new bench that you seen us make from pretty much start to finish. Hope that wasn't too boring for y'all. <laughs> but yeah, comfy. Two nice big props on the back too, so it's solid. Tyson with everything on top of him. There we go. I've got noodles because Tim's uh, not a noodle person. <laughs> I've got my noodles just you know, with a Chinese or something. <laughs> <laughs> the steak's done. There you go. Can't beat a nice raging fly fire. I'm just burning off the debris left over from the uh, raised floor build in the cabin. Just loads of odds and ends and that. Oh, it's nice and warm because the temperature is rapidly dropping. Yeah, big flames. Even Tyson can feel it sitting on the bench. Fire's going in there too, we've closed the door to keep the heat in. So I've got jam roly poly pudding been cooking. Had it on top of here for a while and then just in the front of the fire here and it's bubbling away. Custard in the back. Needs a little stir. Oh, yeah. The uh, thing we put around the chimney is bone dry now, just from the heat from it. And inside. No, there's no left in it, Tim. No. I think it's gone, yeah. no. So now I've pulled everything out, that's the finished floor. Pulled that other wall out last night too. Looks grand. That's Tim just getting the last of his stuff together. Hi people. Got my kit there. Walking up this road here, Tyson and me. We'll just walk by this little memorial. Dean and Brandon. Oh four. Must have been in a car accident or run down. It's a shame. Aye. Most Heading back through the farm. Also, I just uh, had a little look at YouTube while I'm walking and I get a lot of people asking me what I do when I'm camping for brown bear. 
and uh, stuff like that so yeah there's no in England this is where we are now in England we don't have brown bears we don't have any bears the most dangerous thing in wildlife we have is either mother nature or a badger pretty much and it's very rare you see badgers because they're nocturnal animals and don't really bother you they're more scared of you than they are of them so yeah no bears no lions no tigers no cheetahs we do have lynx but again they're they're uh, they've been reintroduced in Cumbria but not not it's not something you see you know what I mean you could live in the same wood for it for 10 years and never see it because it's just so stealth and majestic there's a heron well floodplain camps unflooded again Fire pit's fairly mangled. Bench is definitely gone now. I've searched the whole place. There's not one here. You can see the bridge uh, showed you at the, that we used to cut across. Showed you at the start of the video. It was almost overpowering the water was. Well guys, that's pretty much it for now. Listen. We'll uh, catch you all again soon. Big thanks for watching, thanks for the support. Hope you enjoy.